Hello everyone and welcome to this video tutorial on parliamentary lawmaking. Today we're going to be looking at how a bill becomes an act of parliament. We already know that the main legislative body in the UK is parliament and parliament is responsible for making our laws. And we know from our previous video tutorial that parliament is made up of three elements, the House of Commons, the House of Lords and the monarchy. Laws passed by Parliament are known as statutes or Acts of Parliament. I think it's useful before we start looking at the process that a bill goes through to become an Act of Parliament to just remind ourselves or look at some examples of Acts of Parliament. A recent example um, that's in the media a lot at the moment is the Coronavirus Act from 2020. And this is an Act of Parliament of the UK that grants the government emergency powers to handle the 2020 coronavirus pandemic. And we know from living through lockdown that the Act allows the government the discretionary power to limit or suspend public gatherings, to detain individuals suspected to be infected by COVID-19 and to intervene or relax regulations in a range of sectors to limit the transition of the disease. I've given you some other examples of Acts of Parliament um, here as well. The Theft Act 1968 and the Offences Against the Person Act 1861. We've studied when we were looking at criminal law. Um, a little bit later in this unit, when we're looking at statutory interpretation, we'll look at a case which focused on interpreting the Abortion Act from 1967. And this act was the act that made abortion legal in this country. Um, the Hunting Act, um, one of my personal favourites because it bans fox hunting with the use of dogs. Um, and the Dangerous Dogs Act 1991, really hate this Act of Parliament because it means I can't have a pit bull in this country, which I disagree entirely with. So I've given you these examples just to um, draw your attention to Acts of Parliament. We've seen some before. Um, and this is the end result of a bill becoming an act. This is our end result. We now have to look at how an act of parliament is made. So firstly, we have green papers and white papers. The very first stage um, in actually creating a bill. So a bill turns into an act, but before we even get a bill, we start with a green paper and a white paper. Green papers are consultation documents produced by the government. The aim of this document is to allow people both inside and outside Parliament to give the department feedback on its policy or legislative proposals. White papers are policy documents produced by the government that set out their proposals for future legislation. White papers are often published as command papers and may include a draft version of a bill that is being planned. And this provides a basis for further consultation and discussion with interested or affected groups and allows final changes to be made before a bill is formally presented to Parliament for consideration. So once we've gone through the green paper and white paper stage, we then have what's called a bill. A bill is a proposal for a new law or a proposal to change an existing law that is presented for debate before Parliament. Bills are introduced in either the House of Commons or House of Lords for examination, discussion and amendment. When both houses have agreed on the content of a bill, it is then presented to the reigning monarch for approval, which is known as the Royal Assent. Once the Royal Assent is given, a bill becomes an Act of Parliament and is law. Switch screens here just to show you um, the coronavirus bill. We know that this bill became an act in 2020 um, and it created the coronavirus act, but I thought it would be useful just to show you what a bill looks like. So this is a PDF of the bill that was put um, before the House of Commons and also the House of Lords. And if I scroll down, you can see here um, that it tells you what the main provisions are. And if we scroll down, as you'd expect, it's quite long. Um, so it's telling you what each part of the bill is about. And then it says a bill to make provision in connection with coronavirus and for connected purposes. And then it gives you detail on the meaning of coronavirus. It talks about emergency registration of health professionals, etc. 
So that's just to give you an idea um, of what a bill looks like. Switch back to my PowerPoint here. So as I've already said, a bill um, is a proposal for an act of parliament. And we've just had a look at the coronavirus bill. And there are three types of bill, actually. A public bill, private members' bills, and the Abortion Act will be an example of that, and private bills. But regardless of the type of bill it is, in order to become an act of parliament, it must be passed by both houses and given the royal assent. Switch screens again for a second here just to show you the Parliament website because if you're interested in this you can have a look at what bills are before Parliament at the moment. So if you just go into Google and put bills before Parliament it'll take you here and you can see what bills are being considered by the House of Lords and the House of Commons at the moment. And the letter at the side, this stands for Commons, this stands for Lords. Um, and it's telling you what bills are being considered at the moment. And if you click onto them, um, it'll tell you, tell you more information about the bill. You can see here as well that this particular one is a private member's bill, and it was introduced by Lord Falconer. Back to my PowerPoint then, because we're now going to look at how one of these bills makes its way through Parliament. And I've got a diagram here, um, and this shows that most bills start in the House of Commons and they go through these stages, first reading, second reading, committee stage, report stage, third reading. And then they will get passed to the House of Lords, where it will go through the exact same stages again. First reading, second reading, committee stage, report stage, third reading. And then it will be given the royal assent and become an act of parliament. You can see from the diagram that a bill can start in either house, but whichever house it starts in, it has to be passed to the other house to go through the same legislative process. For the exam, it's important that you know what each of these stages is. So that's what we're going to have a look at now. First reading is the first stage of a bill becoming an act, and it's a formal introduction of a bill to the House of Commons or the House of Lords. And you can see that the name and the main aims of the bill are read out, and there'll be a vote on whether or not the bill should continue by MPs shouting either I for yes or no, obviously for no. If there's a clear I, then there's no formal vote and the bill will just proceed. Um, if we do need a vote because it wasn't clear one way or the other, the MPs leave the chamber and walk past uh, one of two tellers who physically count each member who walks past. So you can see that the bill is not debated at this stage, but a date is set for its second reading and a bill number is allocated and an order is made for the bill to be printed. Second reading is the first opportunity for MPs to debate the main principles of the bill. It usually takes place no sooner than two weekends after the first reading. The government minister, spokesperson or MP responsible for the bill opens the second reading debate. The opposition spokesperson will respond with their views on the bill and the debate continues with other opposition parties and backbench MPs giving their opinions. MPs who wish to speak in the debate must catch the speaker's eye um, and no one can speak without being called on by the speaker. At the end of the debate, the Commons decides whether the bill should be given its second reading by voting, meaning it can proceed to the next stage. And it's possible for a bill to have a second reading with no debate, as long as MPs agree to its progress. Once second reading is complete, the bill proceeds to committee stage, where each clause um, or part of the bill and any amendments uh, to the bill may be debated. This stage is where detailed examination of the bill takes place, and it usually starts within a couple of weeks of a bill's second reading, although this isn't guaranteed. What happens at this stage is that there's a detailed examination of each clause of the bill. So when I showed you the coronavirus bill before, we looked at the different parts. Each clause of that bill is going to be scrutinised by a committee of between 16 and 50 MPs. Um, and it's usually a standing committee which have been specifically chosen for that bill. 
And you can see here that in such a committee, the government has a majority, opposition and minority parties are represented proportionately to the number of seats that they have in the Commons. So proposals for change for discussion are selected by the chairman of the committee and only members of the committee can vote on amendments during committee stage. If the bill has been amended, the bill is reprinted before its next stage. Once committee stage is finished, the bill returns to the floor of the House of Commons for its report stage, where the amended bill can be debated and further amendments proposed. During report stage, the committee report back to the House on any amendments that were voted on and passed during the committee stage. And the amendments will be debated in the Houses and either accepted or rejected and further amendments can also be added at this stage. Report stage, the bill is reprinted to include all of the agreed amendments, and the bill will then move on to third reading, a further chance for the Lords to discuss and amend the bill as it nears conclusion. Reading is the final vote on the bill, and it's almost a formality because a bill which has passed through all the stages above is unlikely to fail at this late stage. If the bill started in the House of Commons, it's now passed to the House of Lords, where it's going to go through the same five stages again. So it's going to go through all the stages we've just talked through um, in the House of Lords. If the House of Lords make amendments to the bill at any of those stages, the committee stage, the report stage, then it goes back to the House of Commons for them to consider those amendments. So you can have almost like a ping pong um, of this bill between the two houses. Once the bill has completed all the parliamentary stages in both houses, it's ready to receive the royal assent. And this is when the Queen formally agrees to make the bill into an act of Parliament. There is no set time period between the conclusion of consideration of amendments or ping pong between the two houses and the royal assent. When the Royal Assent has been given, an announcement is made in both houses by the Lord Speaker in the Lords and the Speaker in the Commons. You can see here that the Royal Assent is now a formality, really, and under the Royal Assent Act, the monarch doesn't have the text of the bills to which she is assenting, she'll only have the short title. And the last time that a monarch refused Royal Assent was in 1707 got the Coronavirus Act 2020 up, um, so I showed you the bill before, um, and this is now the Act of Parliament that was given the Royal Assent. And you can find this on um, gov.uk, so if you just search on Google, you'll be able to find it. But just to show you, this is what the Act actually looks like. And you can click on um, to various sections of the Act. So if I click here, um, it will tell me the meaning of coronavirus, etc. So just to give you an idea of what the Act of Parliament looks like there. It is possible in rare circumstances um, to cut out the House of Lords and turn a bill into an Act without them. And we can do this using the Parliament Acts of 1911 and 1949. But this is very rarely, um, very rare for this to occur. One that you might have heard of was the Hunting Act 2004. We passed this act without the House of Lords. Primarily, I think one of the main reasons for cutting the Lords out of this was that it was a lot of the Lords who were actually enjoying fox hunting with dogs. So they were never going to pass this piece of legislation that the public really wanted. But um, we can't ever pass an act without the House of Commons. It's only possible to bypass the Lords in very rare situations. Just to end this video then with um, another diagram just represents it in a slightly different way. So for a bill to become an act usually starts in the House of Commons. We have first reading, second reading, committee stage, report stage, third reading. Then it does the same process in the House of Lords then it's given the royal assent and will become an act of parliament.